32-bit, 32-bit float, what's actually the difference? Is there a, a huge noticeable difference or is it all just marketing? Plus, why is it that you don't see 32-bit float on desktop audio interfaces? I wanted to find out and cut through all of that marketing BS and just find out. Let's do it. I have timestamped everything as ever. Likes, shares, subscribes all mean a lot to me. So if you could, that would be amazing. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to further support this channel. Plus I give away gear on a regular basis. Housekeeping done, let's do it. Okay, let's start with a quick summary of the technical differences. I think it's really fair to consider both of these high quality formats. Uh, the, the differences really start to come in with the way that they behave with different volume levels. Standard 32-bit, you might also see fixed point just kind of attached to that, is capable of capturing some really detailed files. But of course it has limits, like just like 24-bit, you know, if you record too loud, you can clip your audio and then it's ruined. Or if you record too quiet, then you know, if you try and boost it later, you might notice some noise. 32-bit float is far more flexible due to its floating point. It's what? Well, it comes down to really the ones and zeros. And floating point is a way of storing numbers where the decimal point can move or float to represent a much wider range of values than fixed point. It records with such incredible dynamic range that even if you think you've messed up your recording level, when you get it into post, you can basically bring the level up or bring the level down and it'll be perfect. A good comparison would be to say that regular 32-bit is a little bit like um, decent quality JPEG. It's, it looks good, but if you mess up your exposure, there's less that you can do to kind of recover the lost detail. But then 32-bit float, of course, is more like raw photos where your exposure can be wildly off, but you can recover it and it actually still looks really good. So clearly the biggest benefit and the benefit that people love about 32-bit float is the fact that you don't really have to worry so much about your gain staging. It's, um, it's kind of a game changer. I mentioned the differences in dynamic range and yeah, it's stark and that's kind of just putting it mildly. Regular 32-bit has a theoretical dynamic range of 192 decibels. The theoretical is quite important, by the way. That's still loads, especially when you consider the human ear can perceive uh, around 120 to 140 dB of dynamic range, and that's really kind of the maximum on the outside. 32-bit float has a theoretical dynamic range of around 1500 decibels. No, I didn't misspeak. It's massively more, far more than realistically anyone would need, but it does really come in handy for post-processing. Just to touch on the real-world impact of those figures, I mentioned that they're theoretical, that's important, and you know, you'll butt up against the physical limitations of your signal chain way before you reach anywhere near the maximums. By physical limits, I mean you'll overload your preamp and you'll overload your microphone, which obviously have far lower tolerances for volume. But why don't we find 32-bit float on desktop audio interfaces? Surely that would be super useful. I'd like it anyway. Well, firstly, 32-bit float requires two analog to digital converters per input channel, sometimes called a dual ADC design. And of course, audio interfaces have typically lots of inputs. So the more they have, the greater the cost. Secondly, and sticking with cost, but thinking about cost versus demand, and would the extra cost be appealing to consumers? I'm not sure. Uh, I think really the telling thing is that we we don't see 32-bit float right now. I think some company would have done it if there was demand for it. Thirdly, bear in mind that 32-bit float was really designed for circumstances where you don't have control of the input levels. You know, if you're filming something like F1 or uh, a live music event. Those are the times when it's useful and uh, typically recording studios, home studios tend to have pretty controlled environments. So importantly, should you care? I, I, I think so. I care about having either of these on every single recording device that I own. I've got 32-bit on my audio interface, I've got 32-bit float on all my portable recorders. I love having 32-bit float when I'm recording audio for jobs in an environment that is not kind of that I can't control myself. 
and I really appreciate the robustness of the files that I get when I'm post-processing them. Anyway, that's my take. Let's now grind up everything we've learned in this video and make a tasty espresso of tips to take away. Don't be fooled, 32-bit float won't fix bad equipment, but it can sort out your gain staging. It gives you that flexibility, but it's good to know the physical limits of your signal path. Number two, and my advice with 32-bit float is you can basically stop worrying about your levels, but you shouldn't stop caring. Float gives you some breathing room, but it's not an excuse to be just slapdash. I advise still aiming for healthy levels and think of it as just a safety net rather than being kind of auto. Thirdly, I think it's fair to say that if you're recording 32-bit float in a controlled environment, it's probably overkill. We also discovered that the dual ADCs are one of the reasons for 32-bit not being available on desktop audio interfaces. That's what makes 32-bit possible and would push up the prices of desktop interfaces. Lastly, I think it's good to think of 32-bit float like raw photo files, and it's best to use that with intention in post. Yes, it gives you spare dynamic range when you edit, but that doesn't mean you should just push everything to the limit just because you can. It's good to normalize with care, just control your noise floor, monitor your peaks, and you're gonna be in good shape. Anyway, that's it for now. I have loved making this video for you as ever. My questions of the day are, what's your preference? Do you think that 32-bit float is um, useful or do you, f do you find it just more uh, marketing jive? I want to know. I'll read your comments. I'll see you down there. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about audio recording and video, of which Google's algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better videos.